Mr. Gaff here, and today I'll be looking at the default Solstice, the Solstice Burst, and the Solstice SF to give you a more detailed stats and tips than are provided in-game. To skip to a certain part of the review, time codes are listed in the description. So the three variations of the Solstice are Carbines for the Vanu Sovereignty and can be used by the Light Assault and Engineer class. First off, let's look at the differences between the guns. The default Solstice has semi-auto and automatic firing modes, and the Solstice Burst has three round burst and semi-auto firing modes. The Solstice SF is a combination of the two guns, since it has all three firing modes. You can press B to switch firing modes in-game. The default Solstice is free since it's the starting carbine, the default carbine, when you hot drop from when you just begin the game, that's the gun you'll be using if you're VS. While the burst will cost you 100 certs or 250 station cash, and the SF <clears throat> will cost you 500 certs or 700 station cash. Other than the cost and the firing modes of the default solstice and the burst, they are identical in terms of stats and attachments. Therefore, I would advise against purchasing the burst since the same results can be achieved with the default. If you want to get used to burst firing, you can try it out through a weapon trial by going to the unlock page, clicking unlock once, and then clicking trial at the bottom of the pop-up page. Once the trial has expired and you switch back to the default, you will have hopefully gotten used to burst firing the solstice. For the rest of the review, I will refer to the default solstice and the solstice SF, trusting you will remember that the default and the burst are identical. If I don't differentiate between the variants of the solstice it, solstice, it means that they have the same stats. Now to the stats. Each soldier can take 1,000 damage before they die. 500 of that damage can be taken up by shields, and another 500 by the health of the soldier. Infiltrators are an exception, since their shields can only take 400 damage. However, many soldiers will have nano weave shields. That's a cert you can use in the suit slot for all soldiers except for the max, and that's most people use it because they're so cheap and they can boost the overall tolerance from 1050 to 1125 depending on which cert level uh, the soldier is at. So the solstice does 143 damage per bullet at 10 meters or closer, and then drops off linearly to 100 damage at 115 meters. You should almost never be shooting at a target with the solstice at 115 meters, which is a little bit over the length of a football field, because at that distance with, let's say, 28% accuracy, which is average, I mean, I've seen, I feel like that's what I would generally get. Um, it would take you a battery and a half to drop an enemy, so a, ra a magazine and a half. The reload times are on the quick side for the solstice at 1.6 five seconds for a short reload and 2.2 seconds for a long reload that's for the default and on the SF the short reload is 1.73 seconds and the long reload is 2.31 seconds and long reloads occur when you are empty out your entire magazine or you have to put a round back into the chamber for Vanu I guess that would be putting an extra plasma back into the chamber it doesn't really make sense since it's just a battery, I guess you have to like connect the wires to the battery, I don't know. Anyways, onto ammo capacity. The Solstice has a battery charge for 30 shots, which is the average magazine size for all carbines except for the TR carbines. And the Soldier carries 5 extra batteries that add up to 180 shots total. So for recoil, the increments aren't listed, so like whether it's degrees or... I don't know what else it would be, but for what I understand, it should be degrees. So the default solstice has recoil that goes up and to the right at a rate of 0.25 degrees per shot. And for the solstice SF, the recoil is up and to the right at a rate of 0.28 degrees per shot. The first shot multiplier is 2.8 times for the solst default solstice and 2.3 times for the Solstice SF. The default Solstice also has a faster firing rate than the SF at 698 rounds per minute over 652 rounds per minute. 
For projectile velocity, the solstice comes in at 515 meters per second. Now for time to kill, the stats are not listed in game either, but using a calculation of 29% accuracy, which Higby announced was the average in the beta at some point. So that seems to be a good measure. The default solstice in those calculations would have a 1.3, 1 1.03 second time to kill at uh, less than 10 meters, so at the max damage, while the SF comes in at 1.13 seconds. Now, for how all those stats compare to actual in-game um, combat. The max damage of 143 is fairly common among most guns, but the Solstice's minimum damage of 100 is the lowest among automatics. Many of the assault rifles and LMGs drop off to a minimum of 125 damage at 60, 65 meters, whereas the Solstice would be doing 120 damage at 65 meters and continue to drop off. Therefore, I advise against getting into a firefight any longer than 65 meters. If you're up against an LMG or an assault rifle anyways, there's a greater chance that you'll just die unless you really have the drop on them. The best stat on the Solstice variants are the very fast reload times. Since you're running either Light Assault or Engineer class of the Solstice, you have to rely on your speed and agility to be successful in the battlefield. Drop a couple rounds into your enemy, run around cover while re while reloading, and come out the other side with a bit of pre-fire to finish them off. As engineer, you won't have an issue with your ammo supply. Even if you don't have an ammo pack in your equipment slot, you can press B when you have the mana turret in your hands, and it will convert to an ammo pack. As light assault, you will eat up your bullets faster than a college student eats free samples at a grocery store. Therefore, getting the ammunition bandolier is extremely helpful, you can find that cert under the suit slot. Generator. Since we've already Generator. determined that you're going to be up close and personal since the sol solstice has horrible damage at range, running with C4 is very useful as it provides you with the met method to take out maxes and watching reavers blow up midair is extremely rewarding. Now recoil and rate of fire is where the difference between the default and the SF comes in. The lower, lower overall recoil and faster rate of fire on the default gives it a clear advantage in close quarters. Yeah, what the FF has going for it is versatility at mid-range. Other than the three firing modes, it has many more attachments available than the default. Although adding a foregrip and compensator on might give you an accurate gun, the Pulsar Compact is better suited at accurate medium to long range combat than the SF. If you're planning to get the SF, it would be to equip undermounted weapons, either a grenade launcher or a shotgun. A popular loadout for the light assault is to have flash grenades in your grenade loadout and use the grenade launcher as a replacement for your frag grenade. I use a solstice uh, for flanking and mobile maneuvers where I don't want to be weighted down by an underbarrel attachment, making the SF pretty unattractive to me. My attachments of choice for the default are the 1x HPR reflex and the laser sight. The solstice cannot be used as a run and gun weapon due to the, low, the soldier's low health, low damage output, and vulnerability. So you're going to have to be constantly flanking people or backing up your squad. Hip firing enemies inside buildings with the laser sight will generally see you coming up on top as long as you aren't against a shotgun or another carbine with a faster rate of fire. In case you are, retreat to the outside of the building. With the higher projectile, projectile speed on the solstice, you won't have to lead your targets as much, and strafing targets should be easier to hit. This is where you'll be able to take out the shotguns and the faster firing carbines since their projectile speed will be much slower. In terms of situations, this is my go-to gun for attacking and defending amp stations and biolabs, as well as small to medium sized outposts. When running engineer at an amp station, the solstice is perfect for fighting in the enclosed generator rooms and running between buildings. As a light assault, I can prop myself up in the biolab along lenses and wreak havoc from above. If you find yourself against more than one person at a time, you should immediately retreat or you will die. 
Once again, the key to being su successful with this gun is to stick with other squad mates, even just to follow someone else around, as well as flanking and doing hidden runs. I hope this review has been helpful to you. I plan on making reviews for all of the weapons for every faction. If you have a weapon that you're interested, leave me a comment and I'll, I'll work on providing you with information on it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.